Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, the show where we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general, the sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, fantasy enthusiast. And continuing with our conversation, when we last left off, we were talking about the running backs. I gave my first 17 picks. Could have been 16 if I'd left off Alvin Kamara. Uh, at this time, we are still waiting to hear if he's going to be suspended, for how long. News of the Deshaun Watson case just came out, so we know now that he is only going to be facing a likely six-game suspension unless the NFL... Uh, goes forward with uh, trying to appeal that. So, and if they do appeal that, just FYI, it will uh, go directly to uh, Roger Goodell, which is exactly what it did before the NFL PA uh, you know, tried to get this uh, judge to make their ruling. Uh, that was a deal made by the owners and the organization to basically keep power within the NFL in the long run. Uh, so we'll see what happens. We'll see if they uphold that or if they decide to basically do things the way they've always been done. So moving forward, though, with the running backs, um, we're going to talk about the next tier of guys. We finished with my first three tiers, which are all fairly good tiers, and they're all guys that are going, for the most part, in the first three to four rounds. Uh, this next tier are guys going anywhere from the back end of the third all the way up to the beginning of the seventh round. So these are still very valuable uh, starting running backs, guys that may be your RB2 who could potentially break out and go a little bit higher. Uh, or they're guys that, you know, are just going to be kind of a consistent low four player, but, you know, you're going to get something out of them every week. The guy that I have at the top of this list, just because I think he's in a great situation and he's on a team that's on the rise, is Brees Hall, number 18 overall. Um, he's a guy that is going right now at 409 overall, so round four, pick nine. Um, he has a huge draft carry. He's the first guy taken off the board. The only thing that I worry about, he is with the Jets. They have been bad for a very long time. I think they are finally, finally, finally doing like the Cleveland Browns did about two or three years ago and kind of you know, going for going for broke right now on the rebuild. I feel like he is in a really good situation for years to come. I love him in a dynasty draft, and if you can find a way to get him, I would because I think he's going to be that next generation of Dalvin Cook, Christian McCaffrey, um, that type of guy. But anyways, that's just where I have him at. The next guy, number 19, James Robinson is out for an indefinite period of time with an Achilles injury from the end of the season last year. Otherwise, he'd be sitting about right here. Instead, Travis Etienne has not played a single snap as an NFL running back yet in a real game because last year he had a significant knee injury that caused him to miss time. He's in camp. He's telling people that he feels great, looks great. Uh, I believe, don't quote me on this, I think he was the first running back taken off the board last year. I know he was taken by the Jags round two, pick one. I just can't remember. Oh, no, I'm wrong. Najee Harris. Najee Harris was taken number one, uh, first running back overall last year. I think he was the only running back that went in the first round, uh, maybe 20 or 21 overall. Um, but, yeah, Travis Etienne. Uh, Jacksonville should be better this year. Uh, with Doug Peterson. I think they're going to run the ball effectively. I They've run it effectively for undrafted free agent James Robinson, so there's no reason in my mind they shouldn't do the same for Travis Etienne, who has a much higher ceiling, I think, than James Robinson does. Uh, it'll be interesting once he comes back as to what Travis Etienne's role is, if he's done well up to that time, or if James Robinson eats into that. But that's my only big thing there. Um, again, he does play for Jacksonville, so that's not going to be a great offense this year, so we'll see what happens. Um, but the guy that I have 19th, number 20, David Montgomery. He's the only running back in Chicago that's worth having this year. He has a very low ceiling overall because he's on a very bad offense. I think they're going to be a bottom six or seven offense, maybe even lower than that this year. Uh, they just don't have many weapons overall, and I think they got worse, not better. Um, but he should provide a consistent floor, even if that floor is like, you know, 10 to 11 points. His ceiling, any given week, maybe he goes off for two or three touchdowns, he could have a ceiling of like 24, 25 points in a week, or maybe even a little higher. I just don't think he's going to be in a position where, where they're going to be just running the clock out on people and just getting garbage production. He's going to have to be used early in the game, and then... He's going to be required to catch the ball to have any value in the late in the late game there. But, you know, again, he's going uh, right now uh, round five, pick six. Oh, and Travis Etienne's going round three, pick 11. Uh, the next guy I have, J.K. Dobbins. This will go down significantly if he remains on the pup. Uh, but right now, that's my biggest concern. He was doing phenomenal in his last eight games of his rookie season until – uh, last year in the offseason, he and basically every other Baltimore uh, player who carried a ball in uh, training camp went down with a season-ending injury. Uh, so we'll see what happens. If he comes back, I love him. I think he is a steal at uh, his current ADP, which is um, 
uh, 5'10", but again, I don't know if he's going to be back or not. Um, I don't know if he's going to be back to himself, and again, I think running backs can just kind of be thrown into the Baltimore offense and do well, but he definitely is their best option if he's available. Uh, number 22, Cam Akers. Um, he just didn't look good last year in the playoffs. Um, he looked great at the end of uh, the 2020 can- 2021 campaign. No, yeah, 2020 campaign. And then he ended up hurting, uh, getting hurt in the offseason. Again, kind of a training camp injury. He managed to come back uh, for kind of the Super Bowl run. Just never looked great during that. So I will be interested to see how he does. He's a guy that could easily break into that top 12 running back role if he's healthy and looks as good as he did at the end of 2020. Um, but we just got to wait and see. He is going round four, pick 10 overall. Uh, the next guy, number 23, Josh Jacobs. They didn't extend him in Las Vegas for his fifth-year option. That's never a good sign to me. That means that they're basically saying, you got to prove it to us that you're worth keeping. Um, so I don't think they're really enamored by him. However, he finished RB12 in 2021 in a PPR format, so he was perfectly fine, finished as an RB1 last year, and he's basically finished with about 1,000 yards almost every year. He's going to pick 6 uh, one overall. Not a guy that I would hate to have here, but we'll see what happens. Uh, number 24, I could move this pick down further just because of a trend that I found recently. Over the last five years, uh, the San Francisco 49ers have had a different lead back be the best fantasy running back on their team. Last year, it was Elijah Mitchell, which is who I have at 24. He is not really used much in the passing game. He does have a high ceiling if he can maintain the position that he had with the team last year. But that's a scary trend in San Francisco, and he is probably being taken over where he should be if that's the case. Um, They did draft, I think his name's Tyrion Davis-Price, or Tyrion Davis-Price. It could be his year. You don't know. Trey Sermon's still on the team. He could finally break out. Jeff uh, Wilson Jr. is still on the team, and I believe... Got to look back again, but I think Raheem Mostart is as well. So he's got like five running backs, and all of them could be viable options. Uh, going into this year but again we'll see what happens with him Uh, my last guy in this uh, general tier for which again is not a bad tier we're still talking about rb2 range here uh, antonio gibson he's in a terrible offense i do not like the washington commies for a lot of things this year i love scary terry because he's got carson wentz which is easily one of the better quarterbacks that he's had throwing to him Um, they did draft brian robinson out of alabama which kind of scares me for his work production as well. And I just think they're going to be behind in a lot of games, so they're not going to be necessarily game-scripted to do well for Gibson. That said, they were in a similar position last year. He ended up finishing as RB number 10 in a PPR last year. He was not sexy at all doing it. It looked bad. You were scared about him every time you played him. But he did finish well overall last year. So he does have some upside there, but just a guy that I just don't like the offense. I would rather have a good offense that's going to have a lot of garbage time production for my RB1. Uh, So he's definitely a back-end RB2 this year to start the season. He may end up being the pick that wins you the league, but you just never know there. Uh, Moving in, this is the next tier, Tier 5, and this is where I first start having some backups on the list. A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon finished as the RB23 as a backup running back last year. He was absolutely phenomenal. The only negative for him is he's in a running back by committee. He's going at pick 607 overall. He's actually going ahead of Antonio Gibson, which I should say was going 702 overall. Um, So a lot of people have him ahead of Antonio Gibson. I just don't think it's worth that yet. Um, Now, if Aaron Jones goes down with injury at any point in time, he is a top 10 running back option every single week. He should be a daily plug and play every single week. And he may be that anyway because he's going to start on the cheap for daily fantasy anyway as the running back by committee there. Um, so I like him. I just don't love him. The next guy I've toyed with, I'm going to keep him here for now, but I could easily move him to the back end of this tier or maybe into the tier below it. Miles Sanders, 27, Philadelphia. Uh He has gotten less than 170 fantasy points three times in a row, despite them leading, uh, being one of the league leaders in rushing last year. It was mostly on the back of Jalen Hurts and a running back by committee approach. He is not a guy that I want to lean on as an RB1. I think he, uh, I think his potential is actually pretty low at this point. I don't know that he's going to be on that team long term. I don't like him if you're picking him as your RB1. He would be a RB3 for me, so now we're kind of getting into that range for him. Uh, The next guy I have, number 28, is Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. He's in a great offense. 
I would have him much higher if he had shown any semblance of that first round grade that he received from the Kansas City Chiefs a few years back. I would have him much higher on this list. He just hasn't shown it yet. They did add Ronald Jones, which is going to potentially cut into him. So Ronald Jones is going to be one of these guys probably in my next video that I talk about as, as a guy who has high upside. Um, but Clyde edwards helaire he's still a starting running back, and he could be a back-end RB2, high-end RB3. So definitely a guy that you should be taking somewhere in the first few rounds. He's going to pick 806 overall right now. Uh, Miles Sanders is going 705. I would take – Actually, I take that back. I would take Edwards Hilaire over Sanders right now. Uh, the next guy I have is Devin Singletary. He just hasn't shown me consistency, and they added James Cook to the backfield in Buffalo. I think James Cook eventually ends up being the guy there. He was a second-round pick for him. I think he's going to end up taking that spot from Singletary, who is kind of in a make-or-break position at this point. But, you know, we'll see what happens with him. He's in a great, great, great offense, and he had a phenomenal end to the season last year, so they may lean on him. I do think he has the starting job locked up for the first half of the season, or at least the first part of it, until James Cook gets going. Once they see what they've got with him, though, I think it's going to be the James Cook show all the way, which is why I don't think he's going to be a guy that's on your team come playoff time for Devin Singletary. Um, he's going around nine, uh, pick 904 overall. That's probably about right. You know, for his... Early season upside, I would take him a little sooner. Um, Rashad Penny is the next guy at number 30. Kenneth Walker is there. Kenneth Walker was a guy that I was super, super high on. I would have been higher on him than I was on Brees Hall if he landed in the right spot. Seattle ain't the right spot. They've had a bottom-end offensive line, even though they've done a lot to try and help it in the offseason, including drafting some phenomenal uh, offensive linemen. They're just not there yet. He's not a guy that I would trust to to run the ball well behind that offensive line until they can show me something different. So Rashad Penny, it's his job to start with. We do know that Chris Carson is officially retired from football after multiple injuries. I feel bad for the guy. He only had like five seasons in the NFL. And I just I feel really bad for him that he's just gotten hurt so much because he was explosive whenever he was on the field. Penny is kind of another guy, make or break. He was taken first round overall a few years back. I never thought he had that grade. He hasn't shown that grade. But he's a guy that could end up being like RB2 if he has a great start to the season and holds off Kenneth Walker from taking that job from him. Um, moving on, he's going to pick 906. The next guy I have is Cordell Patterson. Uh, I He's Pick 31 overall. The only reason I have him here, he's a starting running back. That's really it. I don't have anything else great to say about him. He exploded onto the scene last year. He's aging. He is a lot older. He's in his early 30s now. As running backs get older, they tend to go down quickly. He hasn't been super successful as a running back, or sorry, a wide receiver. Um, he had about 600 yards in each category last year, but they were all in the first like 10 games of the season. If you were counting on him at the end of the year, you we're probably not winning your playoffs. Um, so he's a guy that I don't really like, except, you know, I do like where he's going in drafts. He's going around uh, round 10 pick two. I think that's perfectly fine for him. He's a back-end RB3, potentially RB4, but we'll see what happens with him. I like Tyler Algier a lot better as a long-term option in Atlanta, and he's going to be a guy I talk about in the next video as well. Uh, my final guy that I'm going to talk about today um, is Chase Edmonds out of uh, – uh, Miami. Uh, you know, he's in a great situation. He has a ton of upside in Miami. He should be the lead back uh, over Miles Gaskin pretty early in the season. He does have to contend with Sonny Michelle and a couple of other additions this year. Um, my big problem with him is he has a lot of potential, but he's never eclipsed more than 115 fantasy points, even when expected to be the lead back last year in Arizona. So I don't know what we can really expect out of him. I think he's going to end up being fine to start the season, but he could very quickly lose that job to one of the other guys that I've mentioned. Um, but again, great situation, a lot of upside. I look for Miami to be a very explosive offense this year, and he should benefit. Whoever the running back is there in general should benefit from it, and you're going to end up getting an RB2, maybe even RB1 out of him. Uh, but he's going to pick nine, or around nine, pick ten overall. Uh, but that's kind of my next tier, tier four and five of guys. And the next tier that I have after this, I'm going to talk about in my next video. It really is just one big, all-encompassing tier after that point of guys with high upside. So I'll probably talk about about mm, 
gone through 32. I'll probably talk about another 15 guys that have really, really high upside potential for this coming season, and maybe a couple that I would just stay away from altogether. But until next time, that's all I got for you. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there anybody that you think should have a higher grade or a lower grade than what I gave them? Would love to hear from you in the comments. Uh, consider liking the video. It'll really help us out and help us grow. It'll help the, uh, the YouTube algorithm uh, for this channel to get you know kind of out there and, and on its feet. Um, and if you really like it, consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it and uh, it, would, it would mean a lot to me but until next time guys again I'm Dr. Denning and uh, rise up